Hi there guys, um, Bimbler here again, um, part two of uh, making a sheath and um, some you know, the hints and tips I've, I've picked up as I've gone along. Um, right, the first thing I'll do, you've, you've got your craft knife, uh, a pricker, a ruler, a pencil, bit, and then what I recommend, a bit of cardboard, I'll get to that in a second. Um, basically what you need to get yourself going, um, a bit later on I'll tell you you need a hammer, I've got this here because of a job I've done not far off. It doesn't have to be anything like this, it can literally be, preferably better with a wooden mallet or rubber it doesn't you know it doesn't mark the leather the same but at the end of the day as long as you're careful you can use any kind of hammer you don't have to go out and buy the fancy leather making hammers i mean the reality is the better the tools and the more um, appropriate the tools you've got for the job you're doing the better you will do you know that's again that's something i'm really finding out but we're talking about the little tips i've learned to get you going and what's really important and then the other stuff helps with the improvement and the quality but if you know you're just getting started there's no reason to spend huge amounts of money for something you might find you don't like. So the first thing I do is I make a um, cardboard template. I used to use paper and then wonder why I used to come up short. A little tip I saw on the YouTube, I think it was LB, um, I think it was LB, um, recommended using cardboard. The reason being, it's closer to the leather, the thickness of the leather. Not really thought about that. So that let, lets me make something and I always make, I make sure I've got plenty of room. Make, you know, basically use the knife as the template and uh, get it cut out take your time as you can see my edges are all nice and straight and clean I haven't just hacked it out and a big lump ready to go onto the leather cut your template out nice and clean that way when you come to put it on the leather the leather's expensive it's very expensive for good quality hide so by getting your template ready and being able to place it on your hide carefully and cut it out you're wasting less a couple of tips there and then once I've got the leather cut out let's put that out of the way then you go on to then start to prepare the leather um, I've got a sheath here that I'm, uh, like I say, I've got to the, this particular point I'll talk you to. Um, the first thing I do is when I've got the leather cut out, uh, put my grooves on, maker's mark, um, get it all ready. Then I put my dye on, so I dye the sheath. Spend, spend plenty of time, you know, um, putting the dye on. Um, hopefully you can see, this is, this is all this has had on is dye. What I do when I've, after I've dyed it, before I get to anything else, is a bit of sheep, a bit of sheep uh, skin. And it's really good for cleaning things up. This was a pair of um, old army gloves from a surplus shop for I don't know, five or six dollars or something like that. And out of the two big pairs, I've got you know a dozen mops that'll last God knows how long for a few bucks. Um, so I, the, the sheath is all dyed up and then prepared. Then the first thing I do is I stitch the loop on. As you can see here, this is getting ready for my dangler, which I showed you in the last one. So the dangler will fit on here, um, matching fittings. Always a nice fit, always a you know a nice touch. Um, as you, I don't know if you can see here, but I've actually taken a couple of little grooves so that when the belt's in, it sits nicely in there. I can still have a decent, nice, nice sized belt loop. Again, the stitching is done in there. Then what I did, I slightly dampened this leather. Um, this is a, because I'm doing this for myself again. I use the side of the sheath, uh, the side of the hide, and it's a bit thicker up here than it was at the bottom, and that meant it was plain, you know, plain up when I was trying to fold it. So what I just dampened it slightly, put the knife in. I've been able to do a little bit of a, just a little bit of wet forming, not a lot, just enough. It's quite a, I'm aiming for more of a friction fit, but a bit of a wet moulding always always helps you fit. Make sure I've got plenty of room in there. Now this is still drying. I probably have to leave it till tomorrow. Um, once it's dry, then I'll move on to my welt, which is picked up somewhere. There we are. So again, I've already measured pretty much. This is oversized, ready to go in. So what I'll do is, as, once this is dried with the knife in place. I'll find out exactly how I want the welt to fit and then the welt will actually go in here. I haven't cut the outside edges off yet, Just I've just started to shape the inside for where the blade and the handle will sit. Um, but once I've got that in, um, you know, once I've got the knife in, that will be measured and shaped and then uh, I'll talk through that a little bit later on, but that's that's the next step. And then once, but once, it, once this is fully dried, I use, uh, what are we? or something is it? Oh, Resoline, maybe Resoline, um, like a silicon based um, or synthetic based waterproofer that go that will the inside. Once they are, once I've got the welt glued on, then I'll give the inside a good soaking with this. If you put this on before the welt, the glue won't stick because it's uh, like a, almost like a uh, waterproof plasticky type of effect it gets and it helps to seal the leather. Um, but I'll do that on the inside. On the outside, I've given this a coat of um, neat spot oil, just puts a bit of goodness back into the leather which you lose with the dye. Um, again, you don't have to have meats for oil. I've used olive oil, 
you know, any, any good quality, clean or, you know, in vegetable oil and things like that. A lot of people don't like neat to put oil. Use it. So um, that just puts a bit of goodness back into the leather. When I, and then when I've done that, I'll put some other, you know, finishes on it. But basically, this will be waterproofed on, yeah, the welt will be fitted, waterproofed on the inside. Then I clamp this together and stitch it up. I use, um, yeah, I tend to use the little spring clamps like I use out in the garage for other things. And what I have is a bag full of somewhere here. Right, here we go. This is the problem when you don't have somewhere set out. I have a bag full of odd little, little off cuts. And you can just see in there, little, odd little squares. Put those either side of the leather to sit the jaws on. That way you don't get any damage on the edge of your leather. Don't just put the, don't put these straight onto leather, especially if it's wet. If your leather's wet and you clamp it with anything, when you take these off, you'll have a dent you'll never get out. And it will just, you know, it will just square little dents and you'll see every little groove and every little mark from the inside of the clamps. So make sure you put something between the clamp and the leather. Um, else you'd say you'll just, especially if it's damp, you'll just ruin the leather. So that's where I'm at with this. What I do is I keep my template, any template I make, always keep them. If you do the same knife again or something similar, you've got a good starting point. Even if it's a different knife, but something that's similar, like say you've got somewhere to start from. Obviously making the templates and things like that always takes time. So, you know, why throw them away when, you know, you might use them again. Um, saves you time on the next project. So there we are. I'll bring you back for part three shortly when I've uh, done a bit more, talk through the other things. Oh, one more tip before I forgot. I've left this out and nearly forgot. Something I do, because a lot of the products are quite expensive, I can't afford to have shelves full of stuff. You know, they're just too expensive. So what I do is I've collected a few jars and uh, given a good clean out. And then I put a quantity of whatever product I'm using, like this is brown dye or the resiline or anything, edge coat, anything else like that. Um, and I bob some in here. Then when it, when I, what I do then is when the last bit from my original container goes into here, I know it's time to buy more. So I'm not having, you know, lots of stock. That's something I actually forgot to tell you as well, is once that ready for going on here, hopefully you can see there's a, the shine on the edge. This was uh, burnished with a piece of wood. You can Again, you can use a, a dowel or something like that. You don't have to buy um, a burnisher, just a dowel. I use water. Some people use soap and other things. I find water works just as well. I give all the edges, um, the edges on here and both sides and all around the top because that basically is finished. Um, burnish them up and then seal the edges with edge coat so that's all nicely sealed so yep so that's where that's at and that's where I'm at with that and like I say, I'll bring you back for part three with uh, the next stage and hopefully you get a few little hints and tips from the things that I'm doing awesome guys catch you soon have a great night